thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 1, where in verse 6, we have a scripture verse that is a comfort to me personally. It says that he who began the good work in us will be faithful to complete it. The eternal security of the believer is something that's debated amongst Christians today. I would like to tell you my own personal story and share some scripture verses, which I hope will be a comfort to you. I was saved in 1985 at the age of 19 in a Pentecostal church. This church was very, looking back, very legalistic. You had to live to a certain standard uh, to be right with the Lord, holiness, and I get it. I believe in holiness. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. But it was very, very strict. In January of 1993, a few years later, I landed a job in a group home where my job description was to secure the campus in a patrol car. Um, I put on the radio, started listening to family radio, station on the radio. And then I started to hear <clears throat> doctrines of grace, eternal security to believer. I, I struggled with it for a little while, but then I started to look at the Bible and the scripture verses for itself. And the Bible has to be our final authority. Not what man teaches us or the church or our own personal feelings. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in John chapter 6, verse 37, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will no wise lose any of them. He went on to say in John chapter 10, verse 27 to 29, No one can snatch us, his children, from his hand. Romans chapter 8. Verses 38 and 39 says that there's nothing that could separate us from God through Christ Jesus. Romans 11 verse 29 says that the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. They can't be changed. And salvation is a gift. Our calling in Christ is a gift. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you all to read these scripture verses and to understand that as Jonah, the prophet, would say, once he was delivered from that great fish, in the Old Testament, in Jonah chapter 2, verse 9, that salvation belongs to the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean the eternal security of the believer means that we could go on living the way we want. No. The tree is known by its fruits. We live a holy life. It should it, our lives should emphasize the life of Christ in us. However, we all sin. We are told in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 10, that if we say we are without sin, we make God out to be a liar. The difference is, for the Christian, is that we confess our sins. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9 tells us that the true Christian does not continue practicing or staying in sin. The reason why is because what we have in us is called the Holy Spirit, the person, power, and work of the Holy Spirit. And one of his functions is to convict us of sin. John chapter 16, verse 8. You will not be comfortable in your sin. That's the difference between a believer and an unbeliever. Unbelievers, when they sin, they're comfortable in it. They keep going on. For the Christian, as Galatians chapter 5 speaks much about, there's a war within you between your flesh and your spirit. And that's a good thing. It reminds us that we're a follower of Christ. So my brothers and sisters, I want us to remember that we all sin. But 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13 tells us that even when we are faithless, God remains faithful. He continues to hold on to us. He holds on to our hands as a parent holds on to a child's hand. I remember when I, my little girls were small and we would cross the street, I would hold on to their hand, even though they would try to push and pull to get ahead of me or whatever, my grip was stronger. I wouldn't let them go because I, was, I didn't want them to get hit by any kind of cars that were in the street. That's how it is with God with us. Even though we might push and pull because of our flesh and sin, God holds us, he keeps us, and he preserves us. This is what's given me a comfort in my personal life. And that doesn't mean this is a license to go on sinning. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2 says that we are saved by grace. But does that give us a license to go on sinning? By no means, it says there. And Romans chapter 6 goes on to say how we are dead to sin. We are dead to the power and the condemnation and the guilt of sin because of Jesus Christ. 
But that doesn't mean we don't go on sinning. We still struggle with sin, my friends. But we confess it as true believers. We repent. John the Baptist and Jesus Christ both started their public ministries with the word repentance. Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, John the Baptist and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. The true Christian, the true believer, will show the evidence of their salvation with repentance. They turn from their sin. They might fall into it, but they come back. It's like going down a wrong road in a car and you make a U-turn and you go back the other way. We turn from our sins, the direction we're going to, and we go back to God. My brothers and sisters, the life of a Christian, it's not easy. A little later on in Philippians chapter 1, verse 29, it says that God has granted not only for us to believe in him, but also to suffer for his namesake. When you come to Christ in life, we have eternal life. Something that can't be turned on and off like a switch. It's eternal. It's forever. However, our walk with the Lord can be toilsome. It can be painful. We have to learn, as I often say in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, to die to self daily. Dying to the flesh. This is not easy. It's a battle. It's a war. Matter of fact, we're told in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, that as good soldiers in Christ Jesus, we are to endure hardship. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 tells us that if we're going to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, we're going to suffer persecution. Life ain't easy as a Christian, but it's definitely rewarding. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 tells us, the Apostle Paul says, For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. For the unbelievers, their best life is now having the things of this earth, the pleasures of this earth. But for us in Christ, our best life is yet to come. Yes, we have the abundant life in Christ here on earth. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 tells us that we have all the spiritual blessings in Christ here on earth. However, our true reward, our true life is in Christ in heaven. And that's what we look forward to. But until that day, as the Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 we need to live for Jesus Christ each and every day and for his honor and glory in a world that is so despairing so lost let our lights and our salts let us be the salt the preservance of the world and life and let us be the light of the world emulating the light of Christ as Jesus said in John 8 12 take care God bless you all this day